This morning, the Supreme Court recognized that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. On June 26, 2015, President Barack Obama delivered a speech stating that the Supreme Court had legalized gay marriage across the United States. Although this event was monumental, it is still a small part of a bigger picture, a movement that started 47 years ago. On the night of June 28, 1969, members of the LGBT community rioted outside of the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, New York. The Stonewall Inn wasn't very fanciful. It served watered-down drinks without a liquor license. The bar had two dark rooms and a bathtub where cubs were rinsed. It wasn't much, but it was a safe haven for gays and cross-dressers alike. During this time, homosexuality was illegal in every state but Illinois. Anti-sodomy laws were upheld very aggressively across the nation, especially in New York. By 1966, up to 100 people were arrested every week. Even though the police were legally raiding the Stonewall Inn, which is serving liquor without a license among other illegal activities, members of the LGBT community had grown wary. Crowds watched as employees of the bar were arrested, but once three drag queens and a lesbian were forced into a police wagon, people began pelting the police with rocks and bottles, forcing them to barricade themselves inside the bar. The riot soon spilled into neighboring streets as things intensified. The crowd was finally dispersed after hours of fighting between the rioters and police. The following night, an even bigger crowd of over a thousand people returned. The NYPD eventually had to send in a riot control squad to end the violence after many hours. Over the span of a week, various demonstrations of varying intensities took place across the city. The encounters from the Stonewall riots have led to cultural exploration and exchanges throughout the years. From the aftermath of the protests, a cultural revolution rose. Many major landmarks on the road to LGBT equality happened in the years following. One year after Stonewall, America's first gay pride parade was held in New York. It symbolized a big step in the road to equality, as a public celebration of homosexuality would have been shut down by police or angry crowds of the general public just years earlier. Within three years, the public perception of homosexuality had changed enough to the point that being gay had been removed from the American Psychiatric Association's list of mental illnesses. A year afterwards, Kathy Kozukachenko became the first openly gay person elected into a public office in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In 1996, Harvey Milk was elected into office. He was arguably one of the most famous gay politicians in American history. Milk won a seat on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors and introduced a gay rights ordinance protecting gays and lesbians from being fired from their jobs due to sexual orientation. He also led a successful campaign against Proposition 6, which forbidden homosexuals from being teachers. A year later, he and George Moscone were assassinated by Dan White. During his trial, his defense team argued that he shouldn't be charged with first-degree murder because his depression had diminished his mental capacity. The court agreed, and White was only charged with voluntary manslaughter, with seven years in prison. Outraged, nearly 5,000 people ransacked San Francisco City Hall in what came to be known as the White Knight Riots. In July of 1981, the CDC discovered an autoimmune disease found commonly in the gay community. It was named GRID, Gay-Related Immune Deficiency Disorder. Once the disease was discovered outside of the gay community, it was renamed AIDS. On March 2nd of 1982, Wisconsin became the first state to ban discrimination due to sexual orientation. It came with a lot of opposition and support from religious groups and the public. In 1978, the AIDS epidemic was causing mass hysteria throughout the U.S. The STD had no cure and would very often lead to death. On October 11th of that year, Hundreds of thousands of activists took part in the National March on Washington that demanded then-President Ronald Reagan to address the AIDS crisis, even though it was not until the end of his presidency that he publicly spoke about the epidemic. As the 90s started, the topic of gay rights grew, but was largely overshadowed by huge global events such as the First Gulf War, the fall of the Soviet Union, and the Rwandan genocide. AIDS was still a very relevant subject and from fear, people with HIV and AIDS were heavily discriminated on by society. On August 18, 1990, President George Bush signed the Ryan White Care Act, which was a federally funded program for people living with AIDS. 
Ryan White was an Indiana teenager who contracted AIDS from a tainted hemophilia treatment. He went on to become a well-known activist for AIDS research and anti-discrimination. Bill Clinton's presidency signed some laws that were pro-LGBT and some that were against them. On December 21st, 1993, he approved of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Act. Don't Ask, Don't Tell had gotten rid of the requirement to be straight to be in the military, but homosexual activity was still illegal. It meant that homosexuals wouldn't be asked about sexual orientation, but could not be open either. On the 21st of September, 1996, a very anti-gay law was put into place. It defined marriage as a legal union between one man and one woman. It led to one of the next steps in equality, which was changing the legal definition of marriage so gays could marry. Fresh off the turn of the century, a major step in equality was made in the state of Vermont. It became the first state to legalize civil unions between same-sex couples. Four years later, in 2004, Massachusetts becomes the first state to legalize gay marriage. The court decides that banning gay marriage was unconstitutional because it denied dignity and equality to all people. In the six years following, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, Iowa, and Washington, D.C. all legalized gay marriage. During the 2007 presidential races, LGBT rights became a major focus for candidates. Sponsored by the Human Rights Campaign, six Democratic candidates participated in the first presidential forum focusing mainly on LGBT issues. One of the six Democrats would go on to become the President of the United States. Under the Obama administration, gay rights became one of their biggest focuses. In 2009, one year after Obama took office, the Matthew Shepard Act was passed by Congress. It expanded on the 1969 U.S. Federal Hate Crime Law, which classified all crimes motivated by gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, or disability as hate crimes. Matthew Shepard was tortured to death by Russell Henderson and Aaron McKinley because he was gay. On December 18th of 2010, Obama signed the Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal, which then allowed people to be openly gay in the military. The next year, in 2011, President Obama stated that his administration would no longer support the Defense of Marriage Act, which banned the recognition of gay marriage. In an interview with ABC on the 9th of May 2012, Obama became the first sitting U.S. president to publicly support gay marriage. In June of 2015, the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage in every state in America. It marked the end to one of the battles on the road to equality, as the ability for gays to marry was finally reached. The encounters of the Stonewall Rides have led to the LGBT rights movement, which has molded our society to accept gays. The importance of this subject will continue to change America, as it is a part of many politicians' campaigns. The issue of LGBT rights will be a large factor in the leaders we elect and that will impact other parts of our lives. Exploration between the LGBT community and the rest of society has made America more accepting to gays. With more gay people coming out and living openly in America, the US has slowly accepted LGBT people as equal to everyone else. Within five decades, exchanges in ideals of equality has forever changed our nation. The gay rights movement will continue for years to come and as more landmarks are reached, and to think this whole thing started from the Stonewall Riots.